Now we're here at the Fuel Spirits Distillery in Chicago, Illinois with Paul Hlatko, who is founder, master distiller and everything else here in, in the distillery. Um, Paul, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Uh, can you tell me how this all started here and why did you start a distillery, by the way? Well, I started a distillery a, you know, several years ago based on some family history. Uh, prior to World War II, my grandfather's family had been in the beer business in the Czech Republic. Uh, after the Nazis invaded, they you know, stole the brewery, uh, murdered the whole family except for my grandfather. And after the war, he spent the rest of his life trying to get the brewery back and never did. Uh, when he died, it struck me that this family history and legacy was gone forever if I didn't do something about it. So, and you've started here when? Exactly. I was coming up on almost eight years in business here, been working on few now for quite a bit longer. Uh, but the business has really been around for about eight years and continuing to go really strong. Yeah. So when you talk about few, what would you just say are the, the, the special points? The, what makes you unique? Well, I think of the way we approach our fermentation and our distillation processes make us a little different. Uh, we are a grain to glass distillery that makes all of our own products ourselves uh, in this building. And you'll see some of those production facilities in a minute. Uh, but I think that's one of the things that really makes us stand apart is our approach to fermentation and distillation uh, is different than most of the rest of the business. Okay, so let's have a look at the process here and at the distillery. Oh, welcome. You'll guide us around. Come on back. So Paul, this is the distillery, right? Yes, yeah, so this is the distillery. This is our entire production floor. Uh, every drop that we make uh, is made right here in this room. Okay, so let's go to where everything starts. Yeah. Follow me right over here to the mesh tank. So uh, this is where we actually start the whole process. Uh, we are a grain to glass distillery. What that means is that we actually make all of our products ourselves here in this room. And so we're going to bring in all of our grain, such as the bags you can see right here to my left. And we're going to cook it right here in our mash tank uh, right behind me. And when you cook the grains, you take the grains, you break them down into starches, added malted barley to convert those starches into sugars, and then you add in yeast to convert those sugars into alcohol in our fermentation tanks. Okay. How, how large is this one? What's the size of it? Uh, this is about 3,000 liters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long does it take uh, here to, to mash it? So our mashing process, we do it uh, twice a day. We, we allow five to six hours for our mashing cycle. Do you use enzymes or do you use the multiple? Uh, we augment with a little bit of enzyme, but for the most of most of our sacrification comes from the malted barley. Okay. And the mill is where? Uh, we buy everything pre-milled. Uh, grain dust can spontaneously explode, and we have enough uh, hazards here in the space to uh, make yeah. it not especially not safe. because that's not the, the largest place here, right? Right. Yeah, we're it's. We're only about 900 square meters, and so taking up the space for a mill and a mill room and doing all that safely, uh, we don't have the space. Okay. From here it goes into the fermentation tanks? Yeah, so from here it goes into the fermentation tanks, which is what you're looking at right there. Uh, we have two 30-barrel fermenters and three 60-barrel fermenters, uh, primary difference being that they are uh, twice the size. Uh, in the fermentation, that's where the yeast actually does their work and it converts all those nice sugars that we made when we mash uh, into the actual alcohol. Paul, you told me there's something special about your fermentation. What is it? Yeah, so we're, we take a very kind of a more brewer focused approach to our fermentation than a lot of distilleries. We pay a great deal of attention to the fermentation process. Uh, we use different yeasts for all of our products, uh, focusing in on the flavor of the yeast as well as the flavor of the grain and all the other characteristics that go into whiskey. But the yeast and the fermentation is very, very important to us. On top of that, we actually use agitated fermentation tanks so that we can avoid having unnecessarily hot spots during the fermentation and really helps dramatically improve both the quality of our fermentation as well as the quantity. Uh, we're very proud of the way that we ferment uh, and it's not something that is normally typical in the distilled spirits industry. How did you find your yeast, or, or how long did it take you to find it? So finalizing our yeast selection was a process that took upwards of a year to a year and a half. Uh, what we did is we actually started off by using 10 different yeasts. 
uh, did a fermentation to figure out which three of those we liked the best. Uh, once, we had the, the, once we had the yeast strains that we liked, uh, we then worked to optimize uh, the fermentation temperature because yeast uh, and the quality of fermentation is, is highly responsive to the fermentation temperature. Uh, once we had the fermentation temperature, we went through and worked on our distillation techniques, our distillation proofs, uh, proof off the still, uh, then we worked on barrel entry proof, then we worked on harvesting proof. Uh, and so there is a great deal of work that went into all of our recipes, and we believe that the result of all that work is shown off in the glass. You, do you use one uh, kind of yeast, or do you have different yeast for different tasks? So each of our products uses a different kind of yeast. Uh, for example, our bourbon whiskey is made with a Belgian Saison or farmhouse yeast. Uh, in contrary, our rye whiskey is made with a wine yeast. Uh, it was originally isolated in the Loire Valley in France. And so what we get from those different yeasts are different characteristics. Our bourbon is going to be a very, very spicy bourbon with a lot of coriander and clove, uh, black pepper, white pepper flavors uh, from that yeast. On the contrary, our rye whiskey is going to have some really nice jammy, fruity, stone fruit flavors uh, that might be a little more typical of, say, for example, a Loire Valley uh, French wine because that's the yeast that we use. Uh, let's have a look at the distilling. Let's, let's take a look at some stills. Now that's a high still, impressive high still. You have to <laughs> go through the roof for it, right? Yeah. So we we put this in. We had to do a little bit of a, a little bit of building modification, uh, but we're really happy with what we got. And so this is our stripping still or a column still. Uh, this is a still that separates the water and the alcohol and the grain. Uh, very quickly, efficiently, uh, and without a lot of muss and fuss. Uh, we love this tool. Uh, it really helps us to make the whiskey that we really want to make taste the way you want it to taste. Um, one of the first column stills of this size ever built by the manufacturer. Uh, we bought this from a company called Vendome, which is down in Kentucky, and they are the people that make virtually all of the stills for the large heritage uh, bourbon distilleries down in Kentucky. What are you doing in right here? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Uh, what are you doing right now here? Uh, so right now we are running our bourbon. Okay. Uh, we're cooking a malt whiskey and fermenting a malt whiskey, but what's in here is bourbon. Uh, maybe you could uh, explain a little bit the process in the column still, because not many people are... Absolutely. So in a column still, what you're going to do is, again, you're separating the water and grain from the alcohol. And what's going to happen is you're going to take all of your distiller's wash, which is the completed fermentation, and it's going to get pumped in right here. So this pipe right here is connected to our fermenter. Uh, it's going to pump in. It gets pumped all the way, all the way up to the top. And at the top of the column, it's going to come. It's going to get poured right back down the center of the column, uh, right behind me. At the same time that we're putting the wash down the column. Uh, we're adding in steam at the bottom. And so while the wash is falling and the steam is rising, in the middle, uh, all of the alcohol in the wash is going to flash boil, vaporize, and then that alcohol vapor is going to continue rising up with the steam. Uh, once that steam rises up, it's going to enter into a condenser, which is on the side of the still. And once it goes into the condenser, that's basically a cold water bath that's going to cool that vapor down into liquid. Uh, that liquid comes down and gets stored in our low wines tank, which is right behind us. And from here it goes into the second still, right? And so from here, we're going to store it here, let it rest overnight uh, so that all the flavors of the distillate can kind of start to marry together. And from there, it's going to go into one of our finishing stills over here. And it's in our finishing stills where we're going to have all of our really great copper contact, uh, really fantastic stills. We love using them. Uh, but uh, the, this helps those work much more efficiently. So here we see the, the flow of the low wines after the first sip, right? Yeah, so here's the low wines that are coming down through here. Uh, this is connected to the bottom of the condenser, so the low wines flow down through here, come up through here, and of course the static, hydrostatic pressure pushes it up. Uh, we have a hydrometer in there so that we can check the uh, alcohol content of the low wines uh, effectively in real time not super accurate, but it's accurate enough for this level of the process, uh, just so you can make sure that we're on track. Uh, comes through here, collects here, and gets stored back here in our low wines tank 
uh, right here. Paul, well, you're now here in front of the second still. Yeah, so right here we're standing in front of what we call our whiskey still because this is where we finish all of our whiskey. Uh, this is a 1500 liter Kota still made in Germany. Uh, this is where we take all of our low wines and finish them into uh, effectively our white dog. It's going to work on a slightly different principle than the column still because this is a batch still. Mm -hmm. And in a batch still what we do is we put all of the low wines into the pot right behind me. Right. Heat that up so that the, all the alcohol and low wines turns into vapor and rises up. Comes into a condenser here and then our, our now high wines or white dog uh, get collected here uh, for the hearts and then I've got a heads and tails receiver over here for when we make our cuts. So this is actually white dog flowing. Yeah, so this is unaged whiskey coming right off the still at about um, about 65% alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, very tasty, uh, high quality uh, distillate, uh, but this is getting ready to go into the barrel and I'll go into a barrel tomorrow. Okay, so that's uh, our next point where we will be, is, is the warehouse. The yeah, so we'll sh I'll show you right now, if you'd like, I can show you our uh, barreling station, that would be and great. then we can go over to our rack house. Uh, here we've got our blending and barreling station. Uh, we have a blending tank immediately behind us where we blend uh, the previous day's distillate, and a filling station where we fill all the barrels. Okay. Uh, we're currently filling about eight barrels of whiskey uh, seven days a week. And you're running the still seven days a week. We run the still seven days a week. Yeah. So what's your output uh, over the year in, in pure So our, our, our output is continuing to grow. Our sales, uh, our sales are lagging because of the nature of whiskey and it takes time to barrel and age it. Uh, but we continue to, continue to grow our sales as well as our production. So you told me that you will move out of here in about two years, right? Yeah, so as part of our expansion and our growth, uh, we're going to be moving our production facility over the next couple of years uh, to what is now our rack house, mm -hmm. or one of our rack houses. And so that'll take place over the next couple of years. And then let's have a look at the rack houses. Sounds good. Yes, yeah, so we've got three rack houses right now. This is, this is technically our second rack house that we're sitting in right now, but our first one is connected to it just by door. So it's kind of one and the same. Uh, but this is where we have uh, all of our bottling is just another side of this wall over here. And this is where we're currently storing probably about a third of our barrels. Uh, we are sitting on around 9,000 barrels of whiskey at, this, at the moment and growing every day. So you have different sizes of barrels. Uh, what's the most common you use? So currently we are only putting whiskey into full size 53 gallon barrels. Uh, but we do continue to have some barrels that are 15 gallon uh, as well as some 30 gallon barrels as well um, and what we like to do is try to have like a little bit of a mixture of different size of barrels mm -hmm. because you get different aging and different maturation characteristics off of each. Uh, the smaller barrels are fantastic for some wood extraction uh, and some really great woody flavors whereas the larger barrels can tend to be a little bit more uh, focused on some more the you know, lactones and a bunch of other different characteristics uh, that really only happen over time. Mm. And I see you, you store most of your casks now standing? Uh, we store virtually all of our casks now standing. Uh, the whiskey stays the same, but uh, we can get a much more barrels per square inch or per square foot of real estate uh, stored like this. And temperature here is not controlled, it's just uh, as it is in summer and winter, but the difference is not too bad? Correct. All of uh, We don't really temperature control any of our rack houses. Um, the way they're built, they tend to hold and maintain temperature reasonably well, uh, but the variation does get uh, up and down, and so we do get a great deal of that American-style uh, maturation regimen with temperature variations uh, as compared to the more Scotch style of very consistent temperature. And for how long, um, on average, do you store the casks? You know, all of, our, all of our whiskeys are aged to taste, not to number. So it's really very much a question of what it's tasting like. Uh, it's also a question of, you know, what we're, you know, what's the blend of whiskey that we need? You know, for different blends, we might need a woodier whiskey. We might need a younger whiskey. We might need an older whiskey. And so all of our releases uh, are really based on the flavor rather than number. Okay. Now let's move on to a very special section of the warehouse. And you show us some... Well, experimental casks there. Sure. 
So Paul, around here you have your experimental casks. Uh, tell us something about them. What, what are you doing here? Sure, so here at Few Spirits, we try to engage pretty extensively in whiskey research, experimentation, and trying to find stuff that we really think is cool. Uh, this particular area we're standing in is where we do a lot of our more barrel finishing experiments uh, with you know, barrel finishes ranging from wine barrels to scotch barrels, tequila barrels, brandy barrels, white wine barrels, red wine barrels, uh, anything that's held to any sort of liquor previously, uh, or any sort of wine or anything like along those lines, uh, we probably have some barrels finishing in those barrels uh, either here or at other, other rack house uh, down the street. Uh, we also do a lot of different experimentation with different mash bills, uh, different yeasts, different techniques, um, all trying to find something that is really cool and different and can spark a little bit of joy for the whiskey drinker. Uh, and so we've got experiments ranging from smoky bourbons to malt whiskeys to rice whiskeys uh, to new and different uh, hybrid uh, kind of crossing distillation techniques from different uh, world cultures. Uh, we are very motivated to continue experimenting and finding new and cool things uh, that we like and that we think you, the drinker, will enjoy as well. So when, when we look at bourbon in common, we don't find many cask finishes there. It's, that's because of the regulations or? Uh, certainly different cask finishes are a little bit of a newer uh, trend in the U.S., especially wine cask finishes are, being, are proving very, very popular. Uh, and we're seeing a great deal of success with our wine cask finishes, uh, but we're also playing around with all sorts of other stuff ranging from uh, you know, peated scotch barrel right here uh, to tequila barrels, white wine barrels. Uh, somewhere in here we have some vermouth barrels. Um, always trying to find that new different flavor that's going to be uh, interesting to the drinker. Okay. Um, we've played around with different woods. Like we have most of our barrels are American oak. Uh, we have some French oak barrels. We have some Spanish oak barrels. We have some Hungarian oak barrels. Uh, we have different stave styles. Um, always trying to find that new and cool thing that's going to that we're going to think is really really cool. Eventually, and then you will ideally as well. Yeah, eventually you will come to the market, right? Some of them. We guess that probably one in ten will come to market. Okay. Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit more. We don't know. If we don't like it, doesn't matter how cool it is. It's not going to see the market. Thanks, Paul. So this is kind of our a little bit more experimental area where these whiskeys are going to be a little more focused on different mash bills or different yeasts uh, or something besides a true barrel finish. So these are all new American oak barrels that have different whiskeys inside uh, with some very varying results, uh, ranging from an experimental bourbon that you're looking, uh, that you just saw on the screen, uh, to a, actually a very, very cool sweet smoke malted whiskey that we have. Uh, we're kind of excited about that one. We think that's going to be going some pretty cool places over time. Um, we've got a wheat and mesquite smoked whiskey over here. Uh, as well as some other really cool and fun and interesting different whiskeys um, that, again, may or may not ever see the market, uh, but we continue to chase after and try and find new and cool stuff uh, that people are going to enjoy drinking. Is this actually color-coded, red and blue, and, or is it just coincidence? Uh, some is color-coded, some's a little bit less color-coded. Um, it's supposed to be color-coded, but we're not necessarily the most stringent about that either. Um, at the end of the day, it's just a barrel marking rather than the whiskey in the barrel. And it is actually the whiskey in the barrel that matters. So here at Few Spirits, our number one and number two products uh, are the Few Spirits Bourbon Whiskey as well as the Few Spirits Rye Whiskey. Uh, these are the products that have by far the most wide-ranging distribution as well as our number one and number two sellers. Uh, so our few bourbon whiskey is going to be a very spicy, a very, very spicy bourbon. Uh, it doesn't taste like Kentucky bourbon primarily because it's not actually Kentucky bourbon. Um, certainly the boys and girls down in Kentucky make fantastic stuff, and that's why we try to make sure ours tastes a little different than theirs. It's a mash bill of 70% corn, 20% rye, 10% malt, and we use that Belgian Saison yeast we talked about a little bit earlier for the fermentation process, and that's what we use to get that really fantastic, spicy, yet slightly sweet bourbon flavor. Uh, on the contrast, our rye whiskey, which is our number two seller, uh, is going to be 70% rye, 20% corn, 10% malt, 
uh, with a French wine yeast that we talked about earlier as well. And so that's going to have some really nice spice from that grain, as well as a little bit of sweet from the corn, and then some really nice fruit from that wine yeast that's really going to bring in some stone fruit uh, flavors as well. well. Paul, thank you for showing us around. Thank right. you Thanks for, for coming in. Presenting the whiskeys and yeah, have a good time. Auf Wiedersehen.